Well, howdy, friends. Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another episode on our series on fly casting. Today, we're going to take a look at how we make a tight loop. You know, a tight loop, or one that's close to itself, is an indicator of a good fly cast. First of all, a tight loop is very energy efficient. It's more efficient at unrolling the fly line, which is actually what we're doing here. A tight loop is also very wind resistant, and if we look at simple geometry, a tight loop is a straighter line than a big fat loop, and the shortest distance between two points is, as we all know, a straight line. So let's take a look at a few definitions on how you make a tight loop. Many of you might remember Lefty Cray's Little Library, a series of books that Lefty put out maybe in the late 80s, early 90s. And he also had a series of audio tapes that went along with it. And man, I can remember going fishing back in the 80s and I would stick that cassette tape in my cassette player and listen to Lefty talk about fly casting. And Lefty had a bunch of rules which all really apply, um, but his rule about what makes a tight loop went as such. Lefty said that a tight loop is formed by how quickly you speed up and stop the tip of the rod combined with how short of a distance over which you do it. I'll say that again. Lefty said a tight loop is formed by how quickly you speed up and stop the tip of the rod, combined with how short of a distance over which you do it. In other words, yes, you want the tip of the rod to go super fast, but over the shortest distance possible, and that's gonna give you a nice tight loop. And he's right. Another way of thinking of this, and you'll find that they're really saying the same thing, is Flip Pallet says this. Flip says that you need to keep the rod tip traveling in a straight line, okay? And from a fishing perspective, that should be a straight line that's kind of diagonal in the air. In fact, you've heard me talk about it before, and we're gonna talk about it here in just a minute. That on a clock face, that should be a line that's drawn from about 10 o'clock to about one o'clock on a clock face. This allows you an up trajectory, like an airplane taking off a runway, and then it allows you a down trajectory, fishing down to where the fish are, okay? But it's this straight line path that's very important, okay? And Flip says this, when you come back and you speed up and stop the tip of the rod, the distance that your thumb, and therefore the rod tip, remember the rod tip goes where your thumb tells it to, the distance that your thumb travels off of that perfectly straight line is exactly how big your loop will be. If you come back and you go BAM, that's how big your loop is. If you go BAM, that's how big your loop is. If you go BAM, that's how big your loop is, okay? And of course it's the same coming forward. If you go BOOM, nice tight loop, BOOM, big loop. Okay, so you see Flip and Lefty are actually saying the same thing. If you make the rod tip go super fast over a short distance, tight loop and your thumb, and therefore the rod tip has a much better chance of staying on that straight line path. You've maybe heard me say this before, but really, the loop formation stroke should be right at a 90 degree angle, okay? And let's take a look at this. If we're making an upcast and a downcast, again, upcast like an airplane taking off our own way, downcast like an airplane coming in for a landing, which trajects your line out and over the water, under the wind, uh, just a gravity helps you, a variety of different reasons to make that up cast and down cast. Go back to one of our previous episodes where we talk a little bit more about that. But if you take a look at this, okay, we're going to form an upside down right triangle right here. And that's what's going to help us to form a tight loop. 
And if we look at this, okay, let's remember step one is that we must get it moving, okay? And that's going to be from approximately the down position at about 7 o'clock, rod tip in the water, and then we get it moving. And then from approximately 10 o'clock on that clock face right here to approximately 1 o'clock on that clock face right here, we speed up and stop with a short burst of speed just before we stop. Remember what Lefty says, uh, how quickly you speed up and stop over a very short distance. So that's going to happen right before we stop at that one o'clock position. Okay, so here's your right triangle, friends, 10 o'clock to one o'clock. The rod at the 10 o'clock position is one leg of your right triangle. The rod at the one o'clock position is the other leg of the right triangle. The rod tip is drawing the base up there in the sky of that upside down right triangle and your elbow is the tip of that upside down right triangle okay so if we take a look at that 10 to 1 that's three hours on a clock face that's 90 degrees if you do the math okay so <clears throat> having that 10 to 1 allows an upcast and a downcast you're progressively loading the rod you're fishing to where the fish are uh, tons of reasons for that again go back to a previous episode but another way of thinking of what makes a tight loop is by having the rod travel in a 90 degree arc and this is as you're trying to form that loop you're going to go 90 degrees 90 degrees and that's going to give you a nice tight loop if you go 95 degrees if you go 100 degrees 120 degrees you're theoretically going to open up that loop you're going to reduce the transfer of energy. It's not going to be as efficient and it's going to pile up on you in, in the front. Okay. So really lefty was right. Flip is right. And I think that this method of the 90 degree stroke in forming a loop is going to be really important in helping you uh, to form that loop. The answer is yes, you can form a tight loop by keeping the rod tip traveling in a straight line during the speed stroke, okay? But again, the reason for making it that 10 to 1 angle is the trajectory up and the trajectory down. You've heard me say this before, but a lot of people will tell you 10 to 2. And 10 to 2, yes, is a straight line. And you can get a tight loop by making the rod tip travel in a straight line from 10 to 2 but again you're going to be casting parallel to the ground it might be 18 or 20 foot in the air and unless you're trying to win casting competitions that's just not a practical fishing cast and you'd be fishing for parrots or monkeys in the trees if you change that angle from 10 to 1 you're going to get an up cast and progressively load the rod you're going to get a, the trajectory is going to be a downcast. You're going to be fishing to where the fish are. You're going to be cutting through the wind and you're going to be utilizing gravity to your advantage. Okay. So turn and watch, tighten up your loops and remember lefty's rule flips rule. And then our way of thinking of the 90 degree angle and no more than 90 degrees and you will tighten up your loops. So, let me know how it goes, friends, and stay in touch. We've got a lot more coming at you here in this fly casting series. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.